Hello, everyone. Thank you all for tuning in today. Welcome back to Flight Launch. I don't know if anybody remembers Flight Launch here. So show of hands if you do. It's been ages. Well, maybe not ages, but enough time to forget about it, I guess. So let me quickly refresh your memory. Flight Launch was started back in 2021 to introduce brand new products focused on autonomous drone operations. We launched several products seven to be precise, uh, five of them being docking stations. And well, the product that we are launching today, the star of our show definitely needs no introduction. Back in October, its mini launch in China created waves across the world. And we were all counting down the days until its global launch. It finally happened. March 26 marked the global launch of DJI Dock 2. And since then, literally, like literally, the drone industry has collectively lost its school. We can't wait to show you what we have in store for you today. But first, hi, I'm Vishali, your host for today. And I love to know where you're tuning in from. Please share with us in the chat section. And also, also, please let me know uh, what you're looking forward to from this session. I'll try to get them addressed as much as I can. A couple of housekeeping rules, uh, please feel free to ask any questions during any time of the presentation and by typing them in the Q&A section and I'll try to get them addressed at the end. Flight launch is also being recorded and we will publish it online soon in case you and your friends and colleagues have not been able to attend it today. And we are also streaming this live on LinkedIn and YouTube. So let me begin by introducing our special guest speaker joining us all the way from DJI. As a solutions engineer from the DJI North America team, he has been heavily involved in technical support for doc products and related software. He has also been assisting developers with cloud-based platform development and integration with SDKs. So welcome, Charles. Happy to have you, have you here with us today. Thank you. Thank you. This is Charles. Hello, everyone from DJI and the SC team. Yeah. I'd also like to introduce Achal, who's my colleague and director of business development at Flightbase. And he's going to share with you how to give DJI Doc to enterprise readiness superpowers. Get what I mean? But let's get started with what's, what's new uh, in DJI Doc. And uh, Charles, if you could quickly uh, share your presentation. Sure. Yeah, it's all up there. Okay, so yeah. Welcome everyone. Yeah, this is the DJI Doc 2. Let's see what do we have today. Yeah, back to last year, April last year, we have launched uh, Doc 1 in global market. And let's see what's the Doc 1. Yeah, so Doc One is the first DJI drone in box automated solution, and it's a, a big unit at the beginning. And this is some key scenarios for the Doc One. So we want to use Doc One mainly focus on a security patrol and search and rescue, and some first responder, also some inspections. So that's that's kind of uh, Doc One's. And a focus of the uh, major use case at the beginning. So, in that case, we try not to have a better one this year, which we'll call a DJI Doc 2. Yep. So, that's what we have in this. What we have yeah. Doc 2. Uh -huh. So, yep. So, if you could let everyone know what's be what's new with the DJI Doc 2? Yeah, so um, coming with the Doc 1, so there's a lot of new features of Doc 2 because it's just covered some other uh, vertical that's not be covered, fully covered by Doc 1, for example, mapping and surveying. So in the Doc 1, uh, we can use the Doc 1 for mapping survey, but uh, in some of the case, if you want to have like high accuracy mapping, or reconstruction, or even kind of um, more professional uh, mapping and survey use, 
dot quan probably not that good. So in that case, we try to uh, have a dot two to cover that part, but also can do the exactly same thing as a dot one. That's the big uh, update for dot two. Another thing is um, current dot two is like small size, but more functionally on on that. And also we have some uh, we try not to fix a, some dot one challenge. So so in that case, we have a better range of doc two. Like I said, also some high accuracy of mapping and capabilities. So that's uh, that's the doc two. And I would try not to give some uh, comparison between doc one and doc two based on the basic specs. So here's this for the size is almost like uh, not just one half of the doc one, but it's almost like that. But the weight is like almost one third of doc doc one. So right now for the doc two is about 34, uh, 34 kilogram. And the operation range can support like 10 kilometers. So that's a huge improve compared with the doc one. And also we have 50 minutes flight maximum flight time for the doc, uh, doc two aircraft. And also uh, we changed the returning center, uh, like how to return to center of the one uh, after the aircraft landing. So in a dock one, we use the pooling system. So we also have some uh, charging pin point into the aircraft to do the charging. So that's also change our charging system. But for dock two, we use the sliding system. So once it's just landing, it's a slide into the center and it's the wireless charge. So that's the big improvement of our dock two. Yeah, so that's some basic, uh, uh, basic comparison between the aircraft. So for dock two, we have two aircraft. The first one is map three, uh, 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 map three D, like M three D. So which is the um, aircraft can more supporting on mapping surveys. So because let's see the last, uh, the bottom one, it have it has the mechanical shutter. So that's the big improvement of the aircraft. But of all other uh, specs like weight, it's just almost like, uh, uh, like a lightweight of the aircraft, but uh, we have maximum uh, longer flight time. And all some, uh, some of the other uh, improvement of the zoom ca uh, cameras, camera sensors. But we also have M3TD, which has ther thermal camera. So, uh, but it's not, uh, doesn't include the uh, mechanical shutter. So it's more related with, uh, like I said, it's covered more like a dark one's probability, uh, capability like uh, thermal image for uh, inspection or a first responder. So that's the difference between the aircraft. So let's see some dark two highlights. So for the dark two, we have a lot of new features um, based on a dock one experience, you know, so uh, during the dock one uh, journey in the last year, for the whole year, we received a lot of um, like feedback and some requests, you know, so we try not to make a better one to fit the current market. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Let's see some feature highlights of dock two. First one, in the dock two, we have a dock site evaluation. So we all know that we have to uh, like go through the fully deployment uh, process of the dock deployment. Like you needed to do the site survey, um, trying to, to get some hardware done to make sure you can fully de uh, deploy the dock and like, like successfully. So in that case, we try to um, Give, give you guys a better feature to do the site survey. So right now you can just use a, a Mavic like drone or M3T or M3TD uh, to do a pre-check of the, of, of the current site. So what you should do is just use the function in a RC with the connected with the uh, aircraft and you can just get a result of your current Site score um, from the from the from this uh, app. So I'm gonna show the uh, how how it works. So it can be done within like 20 minutes. 
sometimes more like 15 minutes can get a score. So the aircraft gonna automatically be evaluated to the current location to let you know it's a better place to the dock site or not. Yeah, so in that case, you don't need to use other like tools or uh, trying to take flight to test about signal strength in the area or some of the other blocking, uh, like uh, obstacle blocking issue, all related with uh, uh, with like signal, satellite signal. So in, in that case, you can only use these features to do the site, dot site survey. Next, like easy transportation. So right now, we just, like I said, it's almost the one third weight of the light weight of the dock one. So it's about like 34 kilogram. So two men can easily lift that up and move it and move to anywhere. And it can also carry it by a home SUV. So which means you can easily try to change the location, move to other place, or even at the beginning, you wanted to deploy it. It's not a, that heavy anymore. And you can easily try to uh, transport it to any place you want with the home SUV. So that's a big improvement. So you see in a video, like two men can easily deploy that. Okay, next is a one tap uh, panorama. So for now, you can just use uh, use the function to fly up to, or even just uh, use the pilot too. You can just one click, the, uh, the, the dog gonna take a, Panorama automatically, and it will just uh, save the image in a no matter your cloud or your local, and you can always check that. So, uh, why we wanted to uh, introduce this feature? So, uh, normally we suggest you guys at the beginning you want to uh, deploy the dock, and once we've done the deployment, you can always use this feature to take uh, take a panorama for the dock location. So you probably just click that. You just uh, the, the craft gonna just go up for um, the height you just set set and take a panorama to let you know. So you can always review your deployment location. So that's why we have this function. But you can also use other use this function for other uh, use case. So next one is a, a big improvement uh, with the dog through the our platform like customer flight area. So here you can just have uh, two uh, task area. The first one, uh, let's see the uh, green one. The green one means the aircraft can only fly inside the circle, like the green circle. So you cannot, uh, the aircraft cannot go out. So all the missions should be done in inside circle. So you can just limit the range or area that the dog need, uh, will cover. Uh, the red one means uh, non-flight zone. So if if you just, uh, for example, in uh, in this picture, you had a non-flight zone here with a square. So, but you're gonna, let's say you're gonna fly the aircraft uh, across the non-flight zone. The aircraft gonna bypass automatically by itself, and it just go around, uh, just bypass this area, not just enter this area because it's a non-flight zone. So that's the features can, uh, you can use from uh, through the fly up to. Next is about the uh, cloud mapping. Let's see the video first. So you right now with the dot two and use the fly hub two, you can have a cloud mapping. So you can just have your photos and uh, reconstruct a, a, a map like cloudly. Like in the cloud, you will have the model uh, map model. So you'll provide a mm, cloud map. So this one is more useful. So you will just see you will have uh, here is just trying to provide a 3D uh, cloud map. And you will have a, a map model here. So 3D map, map model here. So let's see. Yeah, so that's the function with the fly up too. So you can use a doctor to do that. Yeah, next is a 2D comparison. So this is the feature that we hand, you can use from the fly up too. So in some of the case you can so uh, we can use this function to support some like no matter reconstruction like real reconstruction uh, monitor or so in this case in a uh, in this video it's just trying to, to inspect the uh the ground situation based, based on the time you see on a uh 
the left one is about the uh, let's see so it, it, it's, it's a different time so and you can show you can put all the um, pictures no not, not pictures the model a, re, a reconstruction model into the fly cap too and you can compare them like this to see uh, more details like that yeah so another one so we have one tap live streaming share so right now you can just share a qr code to anyone you want to let them to to view the uh live streaming so for the dog you can always live stream the uh the like fp camera of the aircraft or uh like uh, or the payload camera and also you can just uh have you we will also have a camera on the top of the dock so uh, right now you just can click the share and uh, uh let uh, send the qr code to anyone and they scan the qr code they will just use the uh, a web browser to to view the live streaming uh like the live camera here so that's that's the that's the uh, new feature uh, feature of the dock too like fly up to also yeah that's the key uh features of doc2 and uh, this is the this is what the doc2 is like lightweight 34 kilogram and reliability you have ip55 for the whole dock and ip54 for the aircraft and we have a better efficiency and also we didn't mention that but also the doc2 can support two way to take off uh rtk or gnss which means if you're just not don't have a better RTK connections, you can just use the GNSS directly. So it can just confirm like every time the aircraft can be mm, took off within 45 seconds. So there's no any uh, long preparation time anymore. So 45 seconds, the aircraft will be in the air. And we have um, like a better accuracy for some with the mechanical shutter with M3D. And then we also have more functional of the aircraft with a dot two. So like quick site survey function, I just uh, said, and also the cloud mapping and lower the cost of deployment and maintenance because it's the, like uh, lightweight and small size and easy to deploy. Yeah, that's the dot two. Thanks, Charles. That's amazing. There's been some incredible updates on the dock too especially like you said the size could fit behind like in a normal suv the camera capabilities i guess a lot of people after doc one's release were eagerly waiting to conduct repeatable mapping missions with the dji doc and now they can and uh, i'm sure everybody has a lot of questions so uh, i can already see a few popping up but keep them coming we'll try to address them at the end of the session but it's time to move on to Achal, thanks once again, Charles, uh, to understand what Flightbase brings to the table for DOC2 operations. There's been some interesting updates that uh, Charles shared from the Flight Hub 2 front. So it'll be interesting to know what Flightbase brings in. And as a host, I'm just posing a question from the audience. So there's been a lot of third party applications and products that are providing DOC2 support. So how does Flightbase differentiate from the rest? And why should people use them for dog operations? Over to you, Ajay. Okay, Bashali, thank you so much, uh, Charles, for that great presentation and uh, launching the DJI Dog 2. And that is where we answer that question. That is where Flightbase comes to the picture. So if you are an enterprise, you're looking for an enterprise use case, and you're looking to integrate automated drones into your ecosystem, that is where Flightbase comes into the picture. So Flightbase makes your DJI Doc2 enterprise ready uh, and we'll uh, learn more in today's session. So let me take a deeper dive. And this is something that we have been sharing uh, from the launch of Doc1 itself, that what is significantly different now when the, with these Doc drones, right? We've been flying drones maybe for last 10 years or more, and we've been doing mapping, we've been doing inspection, we are doing so many use cases. There was an age of flight, that there was age of application, but now is the age of autonomy. 
And so far, drones were disconnected with the enterprise infrastructure. You would send a person and you would just fly the drone, you'll get the data, and then you'll upload that data to an ecosystem or the infrastructure where it would become part of an enterprise. But with the docking station, you're installing this on your site. It is talking to your network, it's talking to your systems, application, and it's becoming an inter integral part of your infrastructure itself, where you need to take care of multiple aspects from data security to compliance, to BVLOS regulations, to integrations with different systems. And that is what we're going to talk about. So when you look at automating drone operations, it has multiple components. So it is not just the drone, the docking station, that those are basics. That is how you enter into autonomy and automate your uh, entire operations. But there are so many different pieces of the puzzle, be it like a payload, like you would need a parachute or you need additional loudspeaker on top of it. Or if you need a UTM, you need an external ADSB. So when the drone dock is off, you can still see what's going around. Uh, you could need detect and avoid system, data processing software, which you could be using in different domains uh, for inspection, for mapping, and you have different choices of the GIS software that you're using. And of course, you need your command center software where you can manage all these operations. And when you're looking to automate this, you need to combine all of this when you're doing these operations. And this is totally... Uh, equally valuable for everybody in the world, right? Because there are so many different regulations, there are so many IT compliances, there are so many different systems that you're going to use. So you need a middleware where you can integrate all of these pieces together from hardware to software, to your applications, to external third-party systems like flight termination systems, parachutes, and so on. And that is where flight-based platform comes into picture. So it provides you the entire middleware where you can bring the right drone and dock that you're using, either it's dock one or dock two or any other docking stations uh, that you wish to use. And Flightbase pro provides you that middleware uh, to piece all the uh, place all these pieces together uh, in for your applications. So let's dive deep, uh, deep and feel free to ask any questions in the chat anytime. And uh, feel free to put in yes if you're following me and if you're able to get that, what I'm talking about. And I'll be happy to see those yeses in, in the comment section. So let me go on and talk about what exactly FlightBase is bringing to the table. And these are the three core things we're going to focus about uh, for the scope of today's webinar uh, during this flight launch. So the number one is enterprise integrations. And we're going to go deep dive and see how you can perform and how can you do these kind of integrations with your automated dogs, which is very important to scale. Second is flight safety, how you bring that added value, different regulations, different country. You are sitting in European geography, you'd have to, of course, have different regulations. US has different, or you could be sitting in Middle East and you need some uh, different integrations of flight safety and proving to authorities that you have really safe operations. And one of the core issues for enterprise is data security. This is becoming a part of your infrastructure. So you are very, very concerned about how is my data handled and we, you have specific cyber security assessment that needs to be performed. So we're going to talk about that in more detail. So let's start with, with the enterprise integrations and uh, let's go deeper into that. So during the next gen, which happened on 24th of February this year, we introduced Flinks. So Flinks is short for flight-based links. These are the connectors which could enable one-click integrations between flight-based and external apps. And since then, we have been rolling that our integrations to our close partners who have been using solutions like Drone Deploy, Genetech, Above, and a bunch of different solutions all together. And we're bringing new partners every day. Just today, we launched uh, our partnership, announced with partnership with SkyBrowse, which allows you to integrate uh, and have uh, realistic 3D models or a quick 3D models reconstructed within within few minutes itself. So Flinks allows you to talk to third-party apps seamlessly, and you can integrate different applications or different systems, be it alarms, where you can integrate alarm system for drone response to incidents like motion sensors, fire alarms, dispatch systems. 
or it could be data processing softwares like we saw drone deploy or pix4d where you have 3d models that need to be used or you could have your ai processing softwares which can detect certain changes in your infrastructure as you're flying that or you're detecting something for a security application it could be tailored to your specific application then you could have a live streaming flink where you can connect uh, your drone dog to a video management system or any other third party system where you wish to live stream your data similarly you have mission and logs where you can import drones and mission apps that manage your resources batteries flight logs so you could be using something like drone logbook air data you can have your own integrations with your current mission and logging system that you use for compliance then you could be integrating detect and avoid systems that you're using it could be something like a radar system or a vision based system with a, from a partners from uh uva onyx who do iris automation uh cassia g and you could also be integrating something like ping usb so detect and avoid systems could be integrated through this as well as utm so you can choose the right utm which fits the requirement of your geography and integrate with the flink so that that is what flinks bring into picture where you can link any third party application systems so you can create the solution as per your use case as per your geography uh, with with this technology so let's take a deeper dive and see how flinks work so let's take an example of data processing so you have the entire flybase platform you've been flying you have a vloss compliance to the integrations you're managing entire flight safety and reliability you're doing mission planning and execution you're doing dogged operations and once the mission is done you can automatically send the data to the choice of your software and we have already signed up several partners that you see on the screen where you can send this data and have these integrations and we are bringing more applications and integrations so you can choose the right software for the right applications and this these softwares are of course well known and you can easily post process the data using these softwares so let's take a quick look at this video uh, where we fly using flight base and how we can process the data using drone deploy so as you see in this demo uh, you can see the operator right now planning mission you can of course import a mission like if you already have a mission planned in some of the software you can import that mission using a kml or a kmz you can modify those missions inside flight base uh, and confer it, configure it for your dog operation you have of course the the mission uh, calendar where you can schedule it and you can have automated missions so you can see right now operator doing the entire uh, planning naming you can see how intuitive it is and it has been designed specifically from for dog operations and you have the checklist and you can launch the drone from the dog it could be dock one dock two uh, thanks to the uh, cloud apis provided by dji it could be seamlessly in integrated with both the docs so you could have a hybrid fleet and you can deploy that and start collecting the data using flybase you're of course seeing the live video feed you can take a manual control you can do a fully automated missions and collect all that data right there this could be directly stored on your private server where you can hook up something like an aws s3 uh, bucket and the data would be directly stored into your uh, private server or a bucket now once it is there what should i do with this data now this is where fling comes into picture and you are seeing a drone deploy fling where you can send this directly to drone deploy and drone deploy would fetch it and the fling the connector that has been built uh, with collaboration with from drone deploy and flight base you would be able to leverage that and create a 3d model right there right then without going on that side so now you could use your software that you love already and you've been using this for process processing and entirely collect that data as well as process the data using that software so that's a brief demo feel free to put questions in the chat box happy to answer them at the end of the session so let's move on here and let's look at more things. So a lot of use cases, and this is something that everybody has been talking about, because once you have started deploying dogs, you could start with something like a mapping use case, but then you realize, hey, why don't I do a 24 cross seven security? I have a resource on my side. And this is what dogs uh, came with, right? They came with that multi use case angle where you can do multiple use cases. You can do mapping, you can do inspection, you can do security. And that is where these integrations become more and more important. 
So alarm flings allow you to integrate with your alarm-based systems, which could be motion sensors, acoustic systems, audio detection, yard management systems, gunshot detection systems, or computer aid dispatch, and so on, where the alarm fling can uh, get all the data or the heartbeat of the alarm source. And then once it gets it, you can send the drone directly to that location uh, via flight base. And let's take a look at quick video uh, from our partners. So in this video, you'll see that you have the alarms which are coming and detecting it from a security sensor. And you just saw that the alarm has come in directly uh, and the alarm, that source has been identified. And you can use either dock one or dock two to launch automatically or launch manually using the alarm fling. So the alarm flings allow you to listen to these third party sources and then plan an automated or a manual triggered mission where it could be automatically launched to that location. So you'd see that you, you have already commanded, you've got that on the alarm uh, tab on the right side that you just saw, and the drone is getting ready and it will get launched from the docking station to that area. Now, once it gets there, you can of course use integrations with joystick like th Thrustmasters or use your keyboard mouse to maneuver, look at that area. Uh, and get all that data right into your uh, private AWS S3 bucket. So you can see that the drone has been launched and it can go to that location and start collecting data. And you can see from the right top that drone has already started moving. You can switch to different cameras on the drones, uh, be it FPV, be it thermal camera and get all the data. And once you have reached there, you can enable your manual control and look around and see what's going on in that particular area. So that's what FlightBase does with, with alarm integration. We just saw a demo of a manual one. This could be entirely automated as well uh, with the flings and automation. Great, so let's move on and let's look at maybe a quick one more which is live streaming fling, very popular. Now, since you're getting this, you may be setting up a command center. You're setting up a big command center where you want to get live video streaming and you could be using a software where you get your CCTV video camera footages, your access based control of your security checkpoints uh, or any other data that is data systems. And you, of course, cannot train the entire team to do automated drone operations. There are, of course, compliances which requires to you have a certain certified remote operator when you're operating these kind of docs in multiple geographies. But when you're looking to share the data with your security personals, you can actually use live streaming Flink to integrate live video stream with your video management systems. Popular ones are like Genetech, very popular. You can get that data right there. There are numerous customers of DJI Doc One uh, and Flightways who have been doing this. Same with something like Milestone or Imex. There are several video management systems or computer aided dispatch systems, typically called CAD systems uh, for first responders. You can get that. So this is something which which allows you to integrate uh, third party systems, and it also helps you use the uh, existing video analytics softwares. So for example, in this one, you're seeing a remote operator right now applying to send a drone to a particular location. And uh, this is a fairly straightforward process. You're getting a checklist and the usual uh, uh, flow of dock opening. Of course, this is done with dock one. You can do with dock two as well. And the drone gets launched. You can see on the left side, the viewers, that there are multiple viewers who are seeing it live. You can have your entire team uh, and you will see the drone getting launched to that particular location. You can see that the payload video is on. But now, now this is where live streaming fling comes into the picture because what you'll see in a bit uh, is this live video stream has been sent to a third party video analytics software and has been fetched again by flight base. So you can see overlays using air detection. So you can see that how uh, you, you can count vehicles or you can detect certain things. Now this opens a whole new world of using it, uh, the standard video analytics softwares or softwares which have been designed for uh, AI detection on video streams could be seamlessly integrated. Or you can build your own uh, if you'd like to use a custom flink. So that is something which FlightBase enables uh, using the DJI Doc 1 and Doc 2, as well as the FlightBase middleware platform. 
So that's it from the enterprise integration and we covered that. Let's move to the next bit and let's talk about data security. So data security aspect, there have been a lot of questions. How do I integrate doc, right? How do I manage my uh, data, operation access, network security, application security, and let me break it down for you. So first of all, of course, you need to have a system and FlightBase provides you that isolation where your data is encrypted. You have AES-256 stored redundantly across the secure location, continuously backups. We have servers all across the world and it could be leveraged. You have operation and access control where you have OR 2.0, uh, you have RBAC, which is role-based access control. You can take the control, take back the control team and give limited access to the people. And you can have proactive in this in, uh, incident response where you can generate PDF reports and audit reports for certain operations. You, of course, have entire network security where you can configure the firewall on the all the communication channel, which prevents unauthorized access, restrict malicious attack attackers, and block communication with any unauthorized server. So you choose where the data is going and you can configure all of that. As well as application security where FlightBase takes care that we have third-party audits done with uh, VAPT reports, where we are continuously identifying and addressing weaknesses in application and infrastructure and vendor provided tools and services. And when you closely work with enterprises, these reports are available, uh, which allows you, be it you are an enterprise user or you are a system integrator working a big enterprise, these reports ensure that you have the application has been tested and they can be compliant with this enterprise uh, deployment. On top of that, of course, FlightBase is certified and compliant with IS 27001, very important in Europe, SOC 2, Type 2, very important in the US and the rest of the world, as well as GDPR compliant uh, for all this IT security requirements and compliance. We have a dedicated team who can work with you on cyber security uh, assessment and IT compliance, and we can help you with a quick turnaround on those kind of forms and which is very important as you're deploying these kind of docking stations. On top of that, a lot of geographies, a lot of customers have various uh, deployment uh, requirements. So it's not just cloud, which works for everybody. Uh, there have been requirements and this is something which has been scaling is on-premise and flightways have been already deploying on-premise uh, on, on the private servers of the customer. So you can meet your cybersecurity compliance and requirements uh, with your complete data or the control. And in some use cases, including DFR, there are systems which where they need to uh, quick connect, disconnect from the internet. So it does not need to be connected and we can pro provide the entire software which can work air gap. So FlightBase Air Gap allows you to operate offline. You can be on a local network and you can manage a fleet of docking station with the same features that we saw uh, and this is how FlightBase has been designed. Uh, for bigger customers, there is also a uh, opportunity for in-country cloud. So if you have a country-wide operation and you have your own cloud servers and you want to deploy it on your cloud, FlightBase also allows you to have in-country cloud deployments. So FlightBase on-premise allows you to have your docs, your entire firewall, which could be entirely isolated uh, uh, through the network, as well as talking to a server uh, where you could have multiple road redundancy, you can have high uh, availability of these servers and could be deployed on your private servers. And you can vertically scale, horizontally scale using on-premises. You can talk to our consultant and they'll be able to help you understand which is the right option for your customer or for your organization, be it a cloud, on-premise, air-gapped, or in-country cloud. Now, moving on to flight safety, FlightBase provides you multiple advanced features. So it adds more fail safes on top of it. One of the most popular one is go to a safe location. So when, when you hit any kind of uh, obstruction or you have a notification coming from a third party, what do you do? We're going to talk about that. No fly zones, uh, Charles already spoke about that and we covered that. We'll talk about that a little bit. Geofence as well as dynamic path planning. So FlightBase provides added features on top of that. Again, thanks to DJI Doc and the Cloud APIs, we're able to build things on top of it. 
Then you have parachute integration. So one of the things which have been very popular, and this is where FlightBase has partnered with AVSS and huge shout out to them for creating a parachute for uh, the M3D and M3D. Uh, so both, uh, both the doc, uh, drones have parachutes now available and have been seamlessly integrated together with FlightBase and we're continuously working to make sure that integration is compliant. So if you have any question on those, we'll be hosting a webinar soon with AVSS where they will be answering more questions on these. And of course, this is something that we've been doing for long. So we understand what are, what is required for BVS approvals. We are working closely with consultants around the globe and incorporating all of those things into a flight based platform. So feel free to talk to us and we'll be able to help you with the correct, correct partner who can help you with BVS regulations. So with that, let's took a, take a quick look at uh, the Doc2 and Flight-based demo video, uh, which is up next. So what you see here, again, at the very familiar UI, intuitive UI, Flight-based dashboard. On the left, you see that we are doing a go-to location uh, maneuver where we are going to launch the drone. You have the geofence, energy sync. You saw that on the checklist, you're all already getting a live video feed on, right? You can see that the dock is closed and now it, it automatically switched and you can see the uh, drone sitting inside the dock too. And as it is getting launched, you can see all of that in the live command center. So you have the live video feed of the dock too. Uh, and everything coming on the dashboard. Uh, you can see how intuitive the left panel has been designed specifically taking in consideration the remote operations. You can get all that data. You can switch to a cockpit mode and see the entire live video feed. You can switch between uh, the video modes and get superior, superior uh, clarity uh, on the video. You can use the manual control to zoom into a particular object or particular uh, instance area and get all that data live on the dashboard. So this is the cockpit view and you can integrate with a third party joystick as well. So you can control all that and have precise movements done uh, with the new dock two and the drone. And once the mission is done, of course, the drone can come back and land uh, precisely. And thanks to the new charging system and the sliding mechanism, it makes even faster to land and again relaunch the drone in the air uh, with the Dock 2. So that's it uh, from the Dock 2 side. Uh, what I want to quickly share is one more initiative that we spoke about last time. Uh, and before I hand it over to Vaishali and for question and answers, I want to just talk about Flight Base Academy. So we announced this again in Next Gen, and today we are very happy to announce that we have launched Flight Base Academy. You can visit academy.flightbase.com and let me give you a quick demo uh, of Flight Base Academy as well. So Flight Base Academy, and you get the link uh, in the uh, chat box where you can go today and log in. And we have already launched our first three courses uh, where you have the learn uh, the course for to learn everything about drone autonomy. Uh, you have Dock and Roll, how to use docking station, and now you have Flight Base 101 course. So feel free to go over there, create a free account uh, on on Flight Base Academy, and start doing courses and subscribe to it so you can learn more about the new courses which are coming related to Flight Base and Docks. And it'll be you can keep uh, be updated from the latest from the world of drone autonomy. Uh, we would be also launching part of certifications. Uh, we have already started doing with select partners. So feel free to, to in, uh, tune into this space to learn more about courses and certifications. And again, I'll request Vaishali to drop the link of academy.flightbase.com so you can start creating account and give us your valuable feedback so we can create the right courses uh, there. So with that, let me get back uh, to the slide and we open up for Q&A. And thank you for hearing me with all your patience uh, and happy to answer your questions. Thank you. Thank you, Achal, uh, for sharing uh, about flight base. I mean, we can clearly see the spark in your eyes when you start talking about flight base. You can literally go on and on for hours. Uh, I hope he's spoken enough and given enough, shared enough context about what we are doing 
uh, at Flightbase here. So uh, we'll open the house for Q&A. Uh, please, I've already started getting a lot of questions, but if you have any more questions for Charles and Achat, I know we've already uh, gone past our time, but thanks to the technical glitches, I'm so sorry once again. But yeah, I'll just get started with it. So Charles, there's a couple of questions for you. So uh, there's one around, is the DJI doc compatible with EASA regulations? What licenses should be obtained to operate beyond visual line of sight? Um, so that depends on the local regulations. But um, overall, you probably needed to have the uh, fully like specs of the units. and. Uh, based on the different regulations, if they require some of the uh, abilities or features, uh, I believe it is also need to provide, for example, uh, some of the features like uh, emergency stop kind of things. So we always needed to remember that, uh, trying to find all the uh, requests from the BVLOS flight and then uh, like compare with a uh, match with the current features where, you know, request some other uh, materials from us. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that makes sense. So uh, we have another question around uh, how long does it take for the battery to recharge? Yeah, for DOC2, uh, from 20% to 90% battery life is near uh, 32 minutes, like around 30 minutes. Yeah. OK. And uh, we have another question from Mario, which uh, he's asking if it's possible to reduce the launch time of 45 seconds. I think that's a, been an incredible, uh, in, you know, from doc one to doc two, there's already been a lot of advancement, but is it possible to reduce further? Uh, um, I, I can say yes, because uh, for 45 seconds launch time is more related with the GNSS launch. It's like usage of satellites. You don't need to fix it, uh, wait for the RTK fix anymore. So if you're just in a very uh, good satellite signal place, you probably can just launch uh, under 45 seconds. Yeah. So in that case, it's more like the current all drones launch, like you just turn on a drone, place on, on the locations, use the RC to launch it, yeah. All right. And uh, another question that we have uh, for Achal, I think this time, is there a tight integration with uh, 5G? So, yeah, thanks, Glenn, for asking the question. I'm, I'm not able to understand it fully. Uh, if you are asking about a 5G integration on top of the drone, uh, this is something that we've been doing with other drones, other DJI drones. Uh, of course, that requires an additional hardware on top of it, and we can provide the right software uh, where you can talk with the drone or a 5G module on board the drone. Uh, and uh, I, I, sorry, I could not understand the security. If you can have a follow-up question, I'd be happy to take that. But uh, yeah, you can integrate that with the DOC2. It could be coming soon uh, with this 5G support and we'll be rolling it out on Flightbase. And again, one favorite question is, is there going to be a Flings trial version? I shall probably well, of and you'll be hearing that soon, Ivan. So I see that questions and happy to help you uh, with that. So uh, we are launching new tiers in flight base and you'll hear about that soon where you can get that access. Uh, and if you're looking to get it today itself, feel free to drop us an email and our team would be happy to assist. Charles, there's one question around what's the maximum downtime between two operations with the DJI Doc 2? Downtime? What do you mean by downtime? Uh, is it interval between uh, how long it will take from the first operation for it to charge and then start the next operation? Uh, so if you just like enough batteries, you, you can just start next one. But like I said, you can always like charge in at this time. Like you feel like your next mission is like need a 10% uh, battery, you can just immediately start it. You don't need to wait until the uh, drone charged to 90%, yeah. Okay. And there's one other question from Denzel that, what is the flight time of uh, M3D with a parachute on board? Oh, uh, that depends on like the, 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 the attachment weight and uh, uh, still need to use some like battery support that's all depends on the the the, the, the attachment units but uh, 
without a without attachment is 50 minutes yeah Christopher. Yeah, just to add to that, so Denzel will have that data because now the doctor is getting into hands of the users. Yeah. And as we start flying with the parachute, we'll have more data uh, available. Uh, at this time, it would be very difficult to say uh, what's exact, exactly the flight time, right? Right. Uh, we have another question from Fergus um, Charles that does DJI have any plans to provide power solutions for docs? That are not connected to main power that is for docks that are located in isolated locations um so the current dock can use with some of the uh, power bank but uh um so we just we just don't uh suggest to do that because you know most of the time you want to use a dock you have to like deploy in a place for like permanently like you know so we need a, a um, stable power for all the time and we also have internal battery it can support like five hours without a main power, but um, uh, you know, the power bank cannot just support a unit for like uh, permanently provide a stable power. So, um, but like for some of the case, like you wanna do some demo flight or test in some locations, you can always use a isolate like power a bank with the dock to do that, yeah. So if I may quickly answer, I, I know we are running out of time. Yes, so yes. go ahead. There's a couple of questions that I'm answering. So Eric asked that can we can Flink integrate with DW Spectrum? And uh, uh, as far as I understand, DW Spectrum is a, a video management system. Uh, and of course, you can use the Flink and integrate with that. We do not have a ready integration available, but you can talk to a team and it could be seamlessly integrated with the video streaming Flink and Alarm Flink and integrate a system like DW Spectrum. And uh, then we also have questions for uh, support for multiple operations, multiple machines. Yes, you can manage any number of docking stations using flight base uh, and have the entire fleet management done. So I just wanted to quickly take that uh, as I was seeing that those questions. Thank you for asking. Uh, so there's one last question from, uh, I, I mean, at the end, if there are mm -hmm. any plans for flight base to support uh, slope or SAD mapping missions using Doc2 in the near future? Uh, yes, of course. So this recently uh, is uh, being made available by DJI and the SDK, and this is something that would be available in flight base as well. Right. Uh, sure, yeah. I'll share the flight base academy link here. Uh, here you go. Please feel free to uh, go and sign up for the flight base academy. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, please provide us the feedback of academy, and we'll be launching more. Uh, courses online. Thank you so much. Right, right. All right. Thank you so much, everyone, for sticking around and for extending uh, it by like five, almost 10 minutes the time. So I'll just quickly uh, take a moment to thank Charles for joining us today and for spending the time here. So Charles, do you have any last closing thoughts? Yeah, uh, no. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me. Yeah. As you you like. yeah. Yeah, I would like to thank Charles for his time and sharing uh, valuable insights on Doc2 and uh, being part of the flight launch. Uh, this is again a pivotal moment for the industry. There has not been a time in the history where automated drones are available that cheap, that reliable. Uh, and uh, we are very excited for the adoption that's going to happen uh, with, with the Doc2. So we look forward to working closely uh, with Charles and team, as well as all our partners who joined today, uh, and hope to have more sessions, deeper dive sessions on Doc2 and Flightbase. So thank you so much, Charles, for your time. And thank you, everybody, for patiently, patiently listening to us. And yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Signing off here. Bye. Bye-bye.